thank you for tuning in to Cafe with Sandra Kay. Today, I am honored to introduce you to a truly remarkable woman, Florence Fabricant. Florence is an acclaimed food and wine writer for the New York Times dining section. She is the author of 13 highly respected cookbooks, including the book we are celebrating today, the Ladies Village Improvement Society cookbook, 125th anniversary edition, Eating and Entertaining in East Hampton. Welcome, Florence. Thank you so much, Sandra, for that, that wonderful introduction. Well, it's all very true. Thank I you. guess. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, thank you. I'd like to begin by asking you to share with the audience the history and the mission behind the Ladies Village Improvement Society. Well, it began about 125 years ago and was not started but by just ladies, but there was a group of uh, people in the community who felt that there were certain improvements needed, particularly in the village, things like sidewalks and care for the wonderful elm trees that were lining the avenues and uh, other elements of the village that somehow village government was not tending to and they felt that it was time for a volunteer group to step in, raise money and be able to support the community aesthetically and they've gone beyond just aesthetics to help with scholarships and uh, they have a wonderful store and they, they have the um, LVIS fair that the raises fair every year that everyone looks forward to it's been a little disrupted because of COVID but I hope it'll be back on track <clears throat> so uh, they're a real presence and uh, even though the name is a mouthful They've yes. done a great job. Some people refer to it as Elvis, but. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Very nice. Um, Florence, I know that uh, we all know that you have a brilliant career. I'd like you to share with us your journey. Well, my journey started basically in East Hampton in terms of professionally, because I started writing about food for the East Hampton Star in the early 70s. And not long after, I began to get assignments for the New York Times. And it, you know, you could say from <laughs> downtown East Hampton to Midtown Manhattan is not a, such a long journey, depending yes. on the traffic. But <laughs> uh, that's the sum total of it, really. And I'm still at it. Okay, that's great. And I know that you have other <laughs> uh, very respected cookbooks, and uh, we are delighted to uh, focus today on the Ladies Village Improvement Society cookbook. Share with us the process. How did this book evolve? And who, talk to us about this incredible collaboration. Well, what, uh, the, going back many years, I don't know exactly how many cookbooks the LVIS has produced, but, and they were usually, until the 100th anniversary, they were these spiral bound, mm -hmm. typical community cookbooks with recipes contributed by whoever. Yes. And, so-and-so and grandma and my cousin and whatnot <clears throat> and over the years they evolved somewhat but they were very much rooted locally the 100th anniversary cookbook was a little fancier it was not spiral bound and then the feeling was that for the next one they wanted to be a little splashier more of a presence and to have it in four color with uh, beautiful photography, thanks to Doug Young, yes. and um, to do more of a uh, typical um, cookbook that you will see in bookstores and so forth instead of a spiral bound community affair. They had their eye on things like the junior league cookbooks that have been done okay. over the years that were very elegant books. So this is what they wanted and they came to me as <clears throat> A possible author mm -hmm. and I've done Smart this choice. type of book before I did one for Sloan Kettering called Park Avenue Potluck and um, I proceeded kind of in the same manner by gathering recipes from 
first from members of the organization. Yes. And then, <clears throat> thanks to the help of the LVIS membership and the cookbook committee, uh, we sought recipes from artists, writers, celebrities, and people like that who are part of the East Hampton community. Um, there were already several of them who had contributed to previous cookbooks, and we used a couple of those. The Martha Stewart recipe, for example, had been in a previous cookbook. But I think with the cookbook committee, I assembled probably close to 400 recipes. That's and nice. then it was a Did you reach out individually to each of these people, or were these recipes submitted to you through the well, LBIS Well, the committee? LBIS sought recipes, and they were submitted. And then they reached out to other like notables, like Ralph and Ricky Lauren, uh, to get their recipes. <clears throat> and restaurants. I mean, there's and, many. And the local restaurants, restaurants. exactly. Like, the local restaurants had contributed previously, uh, local chefs. so. We went in that direction as well. <clears throat> and uh, with the help of the LVIS cookbook committee, uh, the recipes came to me. Yes. And then I began to sort through them. Uh, I did not use recipes that were obviously clipped from a magazine or another taken from another cookbook. And I wanted recipes that had a certain level of originality when it came to requesting recipes, for example, from Ralph and Ricky Lauren. We didn't ask them for a particular recipe, left it open to them Great. to decide what they wanted to send us. And then when, when I got most of the recipes, it seemed to make sense to assemble them as menus. Menus tied very closely to the seasonality of this region. Yes, uh, and that's what the cookbook speaks so to. So there's no ski house recipe, <laughs> for example. But truly, that's the way the book is organized, according to the seasons, governed by what you find on the farm stands. Uh, I think the first uh, menu in there is the farm stands and, reopened. And actually, your uh, salad. Yes. The spinach and endive is in there. Yes. yes which we'll get to. And um, so it, it's geared that way to the farm stands and to the uh, seafood and uh, and kind of what people do out here. Yes. So, Beaches, picnics, yeah. Thanksgiving, open houses, holiday parties. Right. These are all different themed menus that you will find in this magnificent And book. unlike most cookbooks today, there is not a s recipe for salmon. Salmon is not a local fish. And I thought there's so much salmon out there, and you can buy it here, Yes. that I didn't think it was necessary. OK. And uh, just to give you one example of the direction that w we went. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, Florence, we're going to start with, um, we have a white start punch. Uh, this is from a local member, uh, Phyllis Chase, of LVIS. And uh, it's got some wonderful ingredients in it. Yes. Uh, an elderflower liqueur, elderberry syrup, some vodka, lemon juice. So um, why don't we uh, have a little toast? OK. This is toasting to you and uh, all that you've done and contributed to the community and to us nationally with all of your incredible cookbooks. And to the viewers and, and the readers and hope everybody remains in good health. And to LVIS, the Ladies Village Improvement Society. May the spirit of East Hampton and the preservation continue. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. Very nice, mm. very nice. Beautiful. That's lovely. So Florence, you have a treat in store for us. You're going to be preparing a dish. Do you want to tell us what this is? Well, smoked fish riette. Uh, riette are, uh, is our, it's a plural in French. <clears throat> it's a usually made with pork or duck, and it's like finely shredded with the fat from the meat, seasoned with salt and pepper, and used as a spread. OK. But Recently, chefs have been creating riette with fish. Uh, Eric Repair at Le Bernardin 
has one, does one with salmon, for example. And Michael Nolan at Fresno Restaurant does his, smokes his own local fish and does his with local fish. And this, I'm using smoked trout, but you could use smoked mackerel, smoked bluefish, whatever smoked fish that you can find in the market works. The thing that's beautiful about this recipe is that it's very flexible and very tolerant, and I make it all the time because it's a go-to simple thing to have on hand if people drop in for drinks, so you need a sandwich spread, what have you. And it's basically three ingredients. I've already shredded the trout, so you can see it. Right. And you can do that with a fork in, the food, in a food processor. These are finely minced shallots that I'm going to add and mix them mix them together we've been smelling the shallots oh, on the set yeah and you just mix that you can do that part of it in the food processor together with the fish it needs a tablespoon or so of lemon juice and that's all i found lemons you never know but this is a lemon without pits hmm. how lucky is that that's lucky and then, to sort of bind it all together, I have creme fraiche. You can use sour cream, you can use yogurt, you can use a combination, oh, and the proportions okay. will depend on basically the texture you want. So this would be for, well, it's, it's an well, and I, of sorts. Yeah, yes. mm -hmm. this will make about a, I don't know, a little more than a cup. Okay. A uh, cup and a half, and certainly enough for. And this is good for brunch. It's before dinner. Yep. You were telling me earlier that it could be a late night snack. It could be a late night <laughs> snack. It could be. You could spread it on on toast and serve it as canapes. Mm -hmm. And that's all it takes. Okay. You do, awesome. And the fish, the smoked fish is salty enough that you don't really even need salt and pepper, but if you wanted to add salt and pepper, ch minced chives, you name it, it, Great. it would take to that. It's a nice You'd, recipe, easy, easy and uh, light yep. for those that you know, don't want to eat uh, any heavy foods. This is great. Well, it's rich enough oh, right? because of the cream in it, mm -hmm. but you don't eat that much of it either. Right. There we go. And a nice little taste. Yeah. Beautiful. And I put it in this little crock. Thank you. I've garnished this with capers. That's another thing you could do. Excellent. Good. Excellent. Thank you. Oh. Yum. I have to finish eating. We should have had napkins. Well, that's okay. We're good. Um, and then you want to talk about the rest of the menu? Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, I decided the book needed a vegan menu. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and there was this cauli curried cauliflower soup recipe that was basically vegan. So I used that as the jumping off point for the vegan menu that also has a couscous dish. Uh, it has uh, Hilaria Baldwin's uh, vanilla uh, smoothie. Uh, smoothie. Uh, uh, the couscous is from mm -hmm. Christy Brinkley that was in a previous cookbook, Katie Lee's Moroccan Carrots. So it's a hearty menu. Yes. But still, uh, it's, it's nice. It's many vegan. Many people are vegan and many people yeah. appreciate that yeah. today. I think it's important it, it, today. That's right. There are a great number of vegetarian recipes in mm -hmm. the book. Yes. but not strictly vegan. Okay. And then this is a play on the palm. a dish from the palm called steak a la stone, which is served on a bed of peppers and onions and bread, toasted bread, croutons. And there was a recipe that I got for this pepper and onion relish that was so delicious and I couldn't find a spot for it, so I asked the palm whether it would be okay if I substituted that 
to serve with the steak, and they said fine. So right. that's what you have here. And this, uh, if you don't put the croutons in, the relish itself is great to keep on hand yes. because it, it holds up a long and time in the refrigerator. And you can put it in jars. And, and, yeah, and you don't even have to go through the whole canning process. Mm -hmm. And then this is a salad I often do in the winter. This is my recipe. It's spinach and, and endives and red onion with Pecans. a scattering of pecans on top. That's lovely. And then finally, we have what are called Nana's Brownies. They are Ricky Lauren's mother's brownie recipe. Yes. And they are actually served in the cafes that Ralph Lauren has. And the polo bar. And the polo bar. bar. Yes. And now you have the recipe. That's right. So that's where, where we at, we're at here. Um, and this is not a menu from the book. This is cherry picking recipes yes. that are in the book. Yes, and it is a seasonal bounty of menus and recipes. And we did have more or less a holiday theme here, but the book does speak to, and let's talk about it, um, some of the other uh, summertime um, features. Well, there's a whole, for instance, there's a whole chapter on strawberry recipes. Yes, They're all strawberry, strawberry desserts. Yeah, because strawberries are one of the local crops when the strawberries are in season and the fields are filled with them, you can just put down your car windows and get the aroma. They're fabulous. And there are a couple of farms where you can still pick. And I remember when my kids were little, they, they would be picking their own strawberries and yes. come home with baskets of them. And for me, yes. it's the local strawberries. There's no comparison yes. between those and what you generally get in the in the supermarket off season. Yes, and I read uh, that you you uh, have your strawberries from May to July for the most part. Yeah, depending yeah. on the weather. Although yes. there are now some farms that are cultivating a kind called TriStar, okay, which uh, are in season until September on the North Fork. There are TriStar strawberries available, and so there are three or four different strawberry dessert recipes. That's a late spring thing. And then there is a beach picnic and yes. there are a holiday uh, entertaining venue mm. that's quite elaborate, but you can not have Pasta, to do it all. And you have pastas uh, by the porch. Pastas on the, the porch. porch. Uh, supper after the movies. the movies. And there's one that I'm particularly fond of uh, called I think leaf raking or yes, something yes. like that. And the centerpiece for that menu is a clam pie. Now okay. clam pie is something that is so local here. Yes. And there used to be a place that sold them and the fish markets used to sell them and they're not so easy to find anymore. Okay. And I must, there must have been a clam pie recipe in every LVIS cookbook. And I sort of read through them used some ideas and not some ideas and anyway assembled my own and I think it's great yes and in fact I've used the filling instead of as a pie as a filling for quesadillas ah, so it works that way too each of the recipes has what are called improvements yes play on the name of the organization and what those are are tips of what you can do to use the leftovers or vary the recipe somehow. And uh, kind of a little lanyap to give you something additional to do. Yes, and to uh, put your own creativity into exactly. the recipes. Yeah, yeah. Which is wonderful. And uh, let's talk about uh, some of the restaurants and some of the chefs that uh, collaborated to put this uh, cookbook together yeah. that uh, may hold a special place in well, your heart. Well, yeah. I mean, Almond Restaurant and Nick and Tony's that have both been here a very long time. Yes. The Palm. Uh, the Maidstone. Fresno, the Maidstone. And all of them have contributed yeah. to this and wonderful And also book. chefs from some of the clubs like the Devon Yacht Club yes. and the um, uh, Maidstone Club. And also chefs who do not have restaurants here, but live here. Oh. There are a number of them, like Eric Repair. He has a ma he gave us a magical melon cold melon gazpacho yes, recipe. It's basically 
I think, three ingredients. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a, a ripe cantaloupe-style melon. Uh, I know we have it featured. Ice uh, cubes and olive oil. I think those are the only ingredients, aren't they, uh, Sandra? Yes. yes. When I got the recipe, I looked and I said, there's no acid in this, no lime juice, no nothing like that. He said, doesn't need it. It's Very beautiful. simple and really delicious. Yes. So uh, that's another example of how chefs have contributed. And then there are uh, recipes not only from LVIS members, but from local people, well, <clears throat> local artists, um, some of whom are no longer with us. We did get a recipe from the notebooks of Lee Krasner, for example. Yes, I saw that. That was wonderful. Yeah. Yes. And an orange-type custard of yes, sorts. It's yes, it's delicious. Yes. And uh, that came from Ruth Applehoff, who had been the director of Guild Hall. And she passed a couple of years ago, but we were really fortunate to have her contribute that recipe from because she knew Lee Krasner and has written, written a book about her. Yes. So uh, that was a wonderful addition to have. And um, just... People came out of uh, the local community to contribute. Uh, an artist, Jack Seeklick, had a wonderful oatmeal recipe. I mean, farm stands from Pike's Farm Stand. We got the strawberry shortcake from Jennifer Pike. Christine so Brinkley's couscous. Yep. So it, it's a huge variety of uh, sources for these recipes. And I tested them all with the help of LVIS. Some of them, the members help test, but if there was uh, any question, I would take over. But I tested a lot of, I would say I tested 75% of them in my kitchen. That's wonderful. Yeah. Very, very nice. That must have been great. How, 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 well, how much time did it take from the well, start of the book actually until completion? Uh, probably almost a year. Okay, well, that's, yeah. that's nice. Yeah. That's not too much time, I mean, no. relatively well, speaking, for this incredible... Well, and then there was all the, all the writing as well. <laughs> sure, oh. which is beautifully and written, of course. And then the food photography, which Doug Young took care of with the stylists. We had more than one stylist. and uh, But it all came together, and uh, it was an exciting project to sure. see it's come to fruition. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, also definitely. have Forward uh, by Martha Stewart. Yeah. Which was yeah. a beautiful uh, write-up yeah. in the book. And uh, there was a, there's a recipe from Bonnie Krapinski, Bonnie and Ben, who died in that plane crash two years ago. But Bonnie was very instrumental in getting this project off the ground and very, very much a uh, force at LVIS. So yes. I'm glad. In fact, her lamb recipe is on the cover. Ah, how nice. Yeah. That's beautiful. Very beautiful. Well, Florence. I'd like to thank you so much for being here. This was truly a, a pleasure and an honor. I'm sure everyone's going to delight in watching this show and certainly in uh, taking a look at this beautiful, magnificent book that you put together. And uh, we want to thank the uh, LVIS committee and everyone involved, including Ann Thomas, that was instrumental in, in making all of this come together and happen. And we want to thank LTV. And uh, up next, everyone, I'm very proud to have another very special, iconic figure with us. It will be Joe Guerrera, who is the owner of Citarella. And Joe, stay tuned, does no fish. Thank you again. <laughs> Thank you, Florence. Thank you, Sandra. A pleasure. A pleasure for me. Kisses, everyone.